Our one today, it was a heavy lifter, uh, and it involves a, a bit of an explanation here. So I had Tom from Milledgeville ask me, how does cloud seeding work, and is it possible to produce large amounts of rain? And he was specifically kind of tying this into what happened with the flood situation in Texas a few weeks ago, um, where there was a report of cloud seeding in the area just a few days before this event all unfolded and took place. He, it is a very, very heavy lift. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this in chunks here. So if you're not familiar with cloud seeding, yes, it does exist. Yes, it is a form of weather modification. So folks that do say yes, moderate weather modification exists are correct. Cloud seeding is a thing. There are companies, private companies that uh, do cloud seeding. There's also government agencies that do cloud seeding as well. So how cloud seeding works is you have to have one, an existing cloud. You cannot create a cloud just by cloud seeding. You actually need a cloud that's already in the sky, already fully developed in order for this to work. So we're not creating clouds out of thin air or creating our own clouds. What we're doing is we are enhancing the clouds that already exist. Planes will fly into those clouds and they will fire with little rockets here, uh, what we call silver iodide. And that is a compound that is very, very identical to an ice crystal or a droplet of water, nearly the same composition. And those are the crystals that you need to grow the cloud to promote, to promote more raindrop development, more snowflake development. It essentially allows the cloud to maximize its potential when it comes to its expansiveness or its growth. So what we're not doing is we're not producing heavier precipitation, what we're doing is we're trying to produce more widespread precipitation, whether it's rain, whether it's snow, all of the above there. So remember, we're not adding to the heaviness of the rain or the snow. We're adding to the more widespread nature of the rain in the snow. Bottom line, those silver iodide molecules, they bond to the existing water droplets, the existing ice crystals in the cloud, and they enhance the snow and the rainmaking process. They're generally just trying to get more widespread coverage um, of the rain. So something to keep in mind, silver iodide, you know, according to all the research that I have read and the experts that I have talked to, once it's in the air, it does not linger very long. We're talking about a short time period of maybe 30 minutes to an hour or two at most based on everything that I've read and everything that I've, and everybody that I've talked to. So with that, you know, it doesn't make much sense to really connect what happened with the cloud seeding days before and then what happened in Texas days after that, because after that case, the silver iodide would no longer be in the atmosphere. It would have been rained out. And that makes sense because again, what we're doing is we're putting this in a cloud that already exists. That same cloud is not gonna be hanging around much longer. If you think about a lifespan of a cloud, it's not very long. And even a thunderstorm, it's constantly recycling and recycling and recycling as a cloud. It's not using the same cloud as when it first started. So there's still some research that needs to be done on this. But yes, weather modification is real in terms of what's going on with this process here with cloud seeding. It's definitely something that's been going on for quite a while. In fact, I think this has been researched all the way back to the 1940s. Uh, it's been used by governments for even uh, kind of giving them an edge up in wars and things like that. It's quite a fascinating topic. I still think there's more long-term studies that need to be done with this. Um, and I've said this multiple times that, you know, messing with a natural process, even cloud seeding, if it may seem harmless, may have some unintended consequences, not necessarily what happened in Texas, of course, but it may have some unintended longer term consequences that we may not know about because our window of study on this thing is still pretty short. You're probably talking about less than a century worth of study. So long term effects, I think, you know, still very low confidence on what that's going to do. But certainly we know the short term consequences and the short term effects of that. Um, and that it likely did not lead to what happened in Texas based on everything that I've read. And there's a lot of scientific agreement on that too. Of course, I'll eat a plate of crow if that is ever proven wrong uh, by someone else with some higher credentials and a whole lot more studies, but certainly that looks to be the case right now. We can't really point to cloud seeding being the case for what happened in Texas, but this is a real thing. Yes, it is weather modification. Hopefully that helps straighten out a little bit of that. 
definitely, again, as I said earlier, a very heavy lift uh, topic to get through. But it was a fantastic question, and I'm glad that it was something I was able to bring up. And actually, I enjoyed researching that, too. I looked through a whole bunch of scholarly articles and talked to a few people that are actually in that business, listened to a few interviews from folks that work in that industry. Fascinating stuff. 